Hello everyone. A little bit of a different video, but I'm still very excited to welcome you to today's adventure. I want to tell you not about bike tours, I'm gonna call them bike adventures, cycling and food adventures, because that is what I wanna start doing. So thankful, now I can officially announce the start of this, this new adventure. And so I want to welcome all of you today with a kind of a special video, something that I do every day, but I rarely make videos of my cycling. I also am riding with Lee today, and she is gonna kind of be like my test subject to see how this route is gonna work out for us. So today in this video, of course, we are gonna meet some new friends. We're gonna take a very fun bike ride. Lee and I are gonna answer just a few basic questions, maybe for people who are just getting into riding their bikes. No problem, like my parents, they are really enjoying getting back into cycling right now. And then, of course, we have a reward waiting for us, and it is a place that I have marked off on the list. We're gonna check it all out, but first, just wanna welcome you to a magnificent day of life. I hope you are feeling great, feeling proud to be yourself, feeling just in love with where you are right now in your life, in the world. And if you do wanna come and spend some parts of your life with us up here in Chiang Mai, this video might answer a few questions for when, maybe how, how it could happen. Hope you're having a great day today. Woohoo! One question, of course, on the YouTube channel in daily videos, whenever people notice that I love cycling, they ask, Joel, what do you eat before your rides? And I have a wonderfully simple answer. You can pretty much eat whatever you want, anything that sits easily in your stomach. Usually for most people, that's gonna be a very simple food. I have here a pretzel. I bought it yesterday, bread is fine. I actually, on a hard bike ride, eat a bowl of white rice with soy milk. That's gonna be a lot of sugar, a lot of great energy that you can really do a lot of hard cycling with. Uh, on a normal day though, on a normal day cycling or not, I eat a big bowl of oatmeal with nuts and seeds. It's very healthy, but it takes a little bit longer to digest. But if you are going on a bike ride, really, it does not need to be very complicated. I actually did not eat anything before this bike ride. I was trying to get all of our bikes set up and kind of think of what uh, the schedule was for today. So I didn't eat anything. So this is gonna be perfect. Hmm. Thankfully, it has not been in my pocket for too long. So it's still very fresh. So we're back to the main road. Clearly a lot of car sounds now. Time to finish my pretzel and answer the next question. You can see my friend here. He is keeping things well caffeinated. Look at that face. I love this guy already. Sometimes I even am excited to wake up just to drink coffee. It's an awesome thing. Yes, I do have one cup of coffee before every bike ride even this morning when I didn't eat any food. But I always have water before it. That is that is a key for me to, to feel good, you know? The body, keep the body basic and not acidic for as long as you can into the day. That's something I've read from professional cyclists as well. But yeah, you can be like us, <laughs> have a pretzel, have a cup of coffee, and get on your bike. Okay, so we are just about to start our loop. And the destination for today is this gorgeous temple through a national park called Opkan. You can see how strong this girl is riding. Just, I'm so proud of her. So continuing with the second question about the, the bikes themselves and the gearing, coming from mountain biking, which is what I would recommend you start, mountain bike or a hybrid bike, it's gonna have a lot of gear options. A road bike has a little bit fewer gear options and it makes it a little bit more difficult to to go at super slow speed. On a climb like this, super steep, you're gonna have to practice your balance. And so Lee is definitely learning fast. <laughs> I'll say that, she is learning fast. One thing I will just recommend though is just don't freak out. When it's super steep, if you just go slow and steady, if you weave a little bit, it's okay. 
doesn't mean you're gonna fall over. Just keep going, just keep pushing, and you can do it. That's a great lesson for all of life right there. <laughs> life wisdom learned about through cycling. <laughs> See, she caught me. <laughs> this one is probably the steepest hill of the whole loop. And thankfully, it's already finished. Look at that. So these are teak trees all around. And then, uh, yeah, oh, actually that's all teak right there. Oh, hi, duck. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, when you get back in here, the air really chills out like four or five degrees just in one minute because the, the valley here doesn't get much sunshine. Wow, and it's like jungly immediately. Wow. We're gonna go left here. It's gonna be like the, the warm up for the ride that we're gonna do today. We're gonna do about 40 miles, so 70 kilometers. Beautiful day. Just past 8 a.m. The first deep breaths of clean air out here in the forest. It is the end of February, so we just do easy rides, enjoy nature to the fullest right now. <laughs> and she has been doing awesome. She comes and rides this almost every day this month. She's trying to get a better time each time, which is so good to test yourself like that. Not every day. Not every day. Almost. Three days per week. That's great. What do you think? How do you feel after three days per week? Die. Would you, if someone is starting to ride more, a little bit more seriously and focus on really making a schedule, would you recommend Two, three, four. How do you feel? Up to them. Up to them. Yeah, good. So maybe when you are first starting out, not setting a schedule is the best way to go. <laughs> She's telling me to ride safe when we're going down. It's so inspiring how fast she is developing. And it's just so cool to see her falling in love with the bicycle for herself. She even rides alone on this loop by herself sometimes. So cool. Isn't that part so pretty? I only focus on the road. Okay. Well, at first, that's great that you're being safe, you know? But after a while, yeah. I guess also a wonderful thing is once you ride the bike enough, you get comfortable enough with being safe on the road. And then you can kind of operate the bicycle just automatically. And then you can learn to enjoy, enjoy the scenery, but yeah, it's good to focus on safety first. Man, the temple up ahead is really beautiful. You will love it. And all the snacks in my pocket are gonna come out when we arrive. <laughs> it shows you how much traffic there is here though. All the dogs just sit in the middle of the road because they're, they have no pressure to move. <laughs> hey buddy. Great to go hard, then spin easy, cool down, go hard again. The air up here, we are at the top of the climb because it's in the national park. The trees are not cleared away, so there's no viewpoint. But the air is so pretty. Can you hear the roosters? Can you hear the birds? We're almost to the temple and there will be way more nature sounds up there, I'm sure, but okay, almost there. See you soon. So a final question, maybe you might wonder 
how safe it is to ride around here, I would say the situation just now is the one example that I would caution for something that is dangerous. Unexpected things in the road in Thailand have always been the most dangerous thing. Most of all to me is dogs. So you saw just now actually coming around a corner on an easy ride, we are just talking, not focused on the road, but we're just enjoying nature. That's when something can happen. So always keep your mind on the, the road, at least a little bit. Easy out. Lee, how much do you like the dogs on the road in Thailand? As much as me? I don't yeah, I think those are kind of like the only real danger to cycling in Thailand. What do you think? Ah, uh, okay. Turn right and then we arrive. The temple, you might be able to see it right now. So this is the village of Ma Kanin Thai. Wow. It is just like, as soon as you stop pedaling, peace and quiet. Water, the birds, that is it. <laughs> Good job, you. 500 meters climbing. Yeah, Doi Gom to Opkan is like the shortest loop where you can get a lot of steep climbs for very good training. <laughs> I don't want to get that. Can I ask you one question? What are some of the things that you need to bring? Just the basic stuff that you appreciate now, learning more about cycling that you, you bring on your own ride. Awesome. Sunglasses? Water. And water. Helmet. And a helmet for sure. A good comfortable helmet that you can sweat and it doesn't the sweat doesn't run into your eyes or it doesn't feel heavy on your head. We bought those in China. I remember that. Specialized helmet. And this one has a safety feature called MIPS. Something about multiple impact protection S. <laughs> but it's a very safe design for a helmet and it's still very light. Anything else? Oh, I know. Long sleeves in, yes. in the Thai sunshine. And how is your leg tan going? What do you mean leg tan? The line on your thigh. Mm -hmm. Oh no, here. <laughs> this one. Oh, <laughs> terrible. I don't like that those. But what did you bring in your pockets? My phone. Just phone? Mask, mask. Ah, and a mask. So the pockets on the back of a jersey, you can see here. The setup of Lee's jersey, usually you have these three pockets. And this shirt, I remember, has a safety place for like money or credit cards right there. You need to bring some sort of identification. Maybe even just like cash, just like roll up a few bills around your ID and put it in there so it doesn't take up much space, but you just arm covers. Oh, sorry, those are gloves. Gloves. Mm, snack each. One snack each. GoPro holder. GoPro <laughs> holder. Money. Money. I brought actually snacks for both of us, but on a normal ride for myself, I would bring a banana and one snack, and that would be about a three hour ride. So I would eat them at about, at about the halfway and maybe even stop for coffee. But with Lee and I today, I brought enough snacks because I knew that we were gonna be doing a great amount of climbing today. So I wanted her to, to have many rewards and uh, opportunities to stop. Also, don't forget, to top up your water bottle before you leave. Every time. It doesn't matter, especially in Thailand. It is hot here. The morning. That looks pretty perfect right there. So this is a road bike. This is a carbon road bike made by Jamis, which is a US company. But most road bikes are made in Taiwan. Actually, all the bikes that I've ever rode are made in Taiwan. The gears, of course, those are important. 
but just the comfort of the bike is the most important thing. My recommendation to you as a beginner cyclist is get the bike that gets you excited to go out and ride it. The advice is as easy as that. She is now probably the second level. She's on her second bike. And what do you like more about this bike? Just the color. Cool, right on. <laughs> it is so pretty, yeah. I love seeing you on this bike and I know that you enjoy it. And this is kind of, this is your first, your first bike. The other bikes were my bikes that I gave to her. her. How do your neck and shoulders feel? I don't feel that. That's perfect. She also has a bike computer. She can keep track of her time, her speed, and it's just cool for the, for the map. I love it just for the map. Oh, let me show you about this map, like I was talking about. So Lee's computer does have a map, but because we are riding together, she did not set it up today. So the cool thing about the Wahoo though, if you preload maps, you don't need to remember to set them up beforehand. So you just preload it one time. So I have the entire map of Thailand in this Wahoo. So forever now, until I leave Thailand, I guess, I can always do something like this. Route back to start. And if you have saved your home, you can do, see, take me home. And the thing I love about the Wahoo is how easy it is to do this. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. And then it will give you turn by turn directions. You can zoom in or zoom out. And this thing is just, oh my gosh, it never misses a beat. Here's, you can even zoom out if you want. So there's my home, see the heart? Are you serious? There are just so many bird sounds right now. If you really take take a second to focus. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. That's not a squirrel, that's a glider. Glider? Yeah, they have uh, a lot of skin under their arms and they can jump yeah, and yeah, yeah. almost like fly yeah, yeah, yeah. from yeah, yeah. branch to branch. Oh, it just jumped. Dude. <laughs> Oh, hi. What have you been doing? <laughs> what car have you been sleeping under? <laughs> I was giving you a hard time for the for the oil mark on your leg. This dog is... Oh, you're right. I see that... Re the beautiful yellow one. Yeah. Now I'm getting sniffed also. It really is a glider. I have a friend in the USA who has that. This tree, so many animals live in it. Lee just said, my mom would love this tree. She said, yeah. there are so many animals that live in this one tree. That's a yellow balloon girl has that tail hat. Can you, hear, can you hear that one? Do you see the one is there? The, yep. the yellow balloon has that hat. Oh, yes. This is the mom looking for us. Yes. See? Mom? Check this out. Mom, you're looking for this bird start to fly there. Lee remembers that you were looking for this one. The whole balance is yellow. Wow, what a view right here. You want to put this on the video, just start the film, just come and enjoy this tree. So this is a northern style temple, kind of like a home temple. And then people in the village donate and raise money together to build this, like a church, really. It's like a, the place to sit and meditate. As with most temples in, in the forest or in small communities like this in the mountains, you're gonna have nature as a integral part of the temple. I always like seeing all these golden elephant heads and just sitting here, sitting down for a few minutes, just resting in this like very peaceful like, sanctuary that this, the morning, so cool, so beautiful rolling over those first hills, but here you can see the bugs now as the temperature starts to come up just a little bit. I love it, but yes, I've had to get used to this over the years, but I really love the warmth. Yeah, you can just ride in short sleeves, about 300 days of the year. 300 days of the year, no? Long sleeves, 300 days of the year. Oh, okay, for sun protection. I mean, for, for temperature, comfort. Short sleeves, short pants, and pink socks.
She says her neck is hurting from looking up at the birds for 15 minutes now. It has been great to visit this Opkan, this road, this little Chiang Mai circuit of ours. Very hilly. See you for some reward, <laughs> the after ride reward very soon. But so far, it's been great. Thank you for letting me take some time to share some tips, share some inspiration, kind of sharing some of the joy of someone new to cycling. I just love being out here in nature with her. So all things beautiful. Hope you are doing very well today. See you for the final part of today's video, the, <laughs> the reward. Another thing we can all understand after you do some hard work, it's nice to, to reward yourself. Why not? Especially when it's a Saturday. mountain bike on so many rides we did together. Now she finally has her own bike and I I can just ride almost normally. Like it's an easier ride, but I'm definitely not bored. So this is the top of the climb and I doubt I even beat her by a minute. Not even one full minute. There she, yep. <laughs> she is awesome. That's the top, babe. Yep, from here, almost all downhill. Okay, a little bonus, of course, we are in Thailand. Saw some 15 baht coconuts, so that can only mean that they are grown right here at home. That is yeah, awesome. Tasty. rarely find such wonderfully large fruit sold for such a cheap price. But at home, it's possible. Oh, thank you. It's a nature's gift. Mmm. Have a little bit of wine. Yeah, it's very mature. It is the natural carbonation possible in a coconut. Wow. Paper straw. This is awesome. They are full. So full. Wow, the one that Lee had was a little more carbonated. This one is just pure, young coconut water sweetness. Mm. And these are so big, it's like you can just fill your entire stomach with one coconut. That's like the whole water bottle. the natural electrolytes, there really is nothing like coconut water. Even some professional teams now, pro cycling teams, are using coconut water during the race. I can see myself through your sunglasses. <laughs> can you even put it? <laughs> and I give it to her because she, <laughs> she just finished hers. So. Charge. We've got one more small hill to go, and then about 10k till home. Do you remember the first bike ride we ever did together? Fif 55 kilometers, and it was on my hybrid you rode, and I rode the mountain bike. Today we just passed 55, one hour faster to reach 55. That's the difference between a little bit more fitness for you, but also your own bike. A bike that fits you. Isn't that cool? 
you are riding so much faster. So we are on our way home, almost finished with this loop, with our trip to Makinintai and the Team Tasty Ride first edition. First journey, volume one. I don't know, what do you want to call it? And do you want to see more videos like this? Because this, now that I have a work permit, as of yesterday, by the way, so today is kind of a celebration. Today is like our inaugural medium length, maybe even short, first voyage <laughs> with all the new possibilities all lined up. We are ready to go. I am legal to work and I can start to advertise and Everyone Bank is my partner in this new venture. Lee is my partner for the fun and for the filming, for the videos. We're gonna still be rolling together, but it is because of Bank that all this is possible. So, Bank, you rock, bro. We are almost home. Yeah, let me know. Would you like to see more videos of this or would you just like to come to Thailand and do this with us? <laughs> Hope to see you here. Yo! See you next time. Love you all. Peace. Turn left.